Welcome to video three of three, where I'll show you how to install the Trex Enhance railing system. The first step for installing a Trex Enhance rail system is to measure and cut my post sleeves to the desired length. During framing, I typically install my pressure treated posts so that it's 38 to 39 inches above the finished deck surface for a 36 inch top rail height. Post sleeves are sold in 48 inch lengths at the Home Depot, which will accommodate both horizontal and stair applications. For horizontal applications, I cut these to 40 inches, which is most common. We'll install the stair rail posts and railing shortly. Those posts will be a little longer. For this cut, the miter saw produces the cleanest cut. The next step is to install the post skirts and post sleeves in that order. If you put on the skirt second, you might scuff the post sleeve as you slide the skirt over the sleeve. Now it's time to get started on our rail sections. In our railing kit we have our top and bottom rails, our balusters, a hardware kit, an adjustable foot block, and instructions. To support the bottom rail at the correct height, I made three blocks at three and three quarter inches wide. At three and three quarter inches, we've preset the correct height of the top rail at just over 36 inches, which is necessary to comply with the building code. Next, I set the bottom rail between the post sleeves. I then position the rail so that, one, the distance between the last baluster hole on each end must be a minimum of one and nine sixteenths inches to allow sufficient space for the bracket, and two, the distance is the same on each end, which ensures the space between the last baluster and the post sleeve will be identical. Now I just mark the side of the rail with a pencil. With the bottom rail marked, I can now cut both the bottom and top rail for this section to length, which I'll do on the miter saw. Using a fresh blade really helps make a clean cut. Since this is your first rail, make a practice cut or two near the end to get the feel for how the material is going to cut. Next, I drill the 3 16 inch hole in the center of the bottom rail in length and width for the foot block, which I'll put in later. To allow water to escape, drill two additional holes evenly spaced on each side of the foot block. I then position the brackets from the hardware kit on each end of the top rail on the same side as the baluster holes using the three number eight by one inch self-drilling screws which are provided. Make sure the brackets don't extend past the end of the rail. If they do, you'll create an undesirable gap between the post and the rail. Next, using the same fastener, I attach the brackets to the bottom rail, but this time to the opposite side of the baluster holes. So far, we've drilled holes in the underside of the bottom rail for our foot block and drainage. The rails are now cut to length with an even margin between the last baluster hole and the end of the rails, and our brackets are attached with the proper screws. The next steps are to insert the balusters and then attach the rails to the post. For this next step, on a clean and flat surface, I laid the bottom rail on its side. I then used a scrap piece of one inch decking to support the balusters as I inserted them into the bottom rail. Starting on one end, I fed the balusters into the top rail. Once they were fully seated in both top and bottom rails, I used a ratchet strap just to snug the two rails together. I then set the rail section on the three and three quarter inch blocks and centered one end at a time on the post. To help hold the section in place, I used a clamp, which only needs to be snug so that I don't damage the balusters or post leaf. Slowly drive the provided three inch wood screws through the holes in the bracket and into the post sleeve and post. No need to pre-drill, but do go slowly and set your drill clutch to a low setting. If you overdrive the fastener, you'll see the post sleeve distort and potentially crack the sleeve. Foot blocks are required to help support every section of Trex Enhance railing. The adjustability of these foot blocks makes them very easy to install. I first turned the turn mount so that it could easily fit under the bottom rail. Then I positioned it so that the nub was engaged with the hole I previously drilled in the rail. Next, I twisted the turn mount until it was fully tightened in between the deck surface and the rail. With the mounting hole facing outwards, I installed one number eight wood screw, which was provided and pulled the sleeve down to cover the turn mount and screw. And finally, the last step in the process is to install the post caps, which is as simple as applying some silicone or PVC adhesive to the tab inside the cap and to the top of the post sleeve and taping down the cap while the adhesive cures. Installing the stair railing is my last step in this project. 
Trex Enhanced Stair Railing also comes in a kit, but there are some differences. Let's have a look. Much like the horizontal kit, we have a top and bottom rail, which have elongated baluster holes to accommodate the angle of the stairs, powder coated black aluminum balusters, a hardware kit, and installation instructions. Inside the hardware kit, we have rail brackets plus adapters to accommodate common stair angles, as well as fasteners to connect it all together. Lastly, we have a foot block. Before we begin marking and cutting our rails, I'll install the lower post skirt and temporarily install the lower post sleeve. Don't cut that lower post sleeve to length just yet. We'll make that cut later. Push the bottom of the post sleeve out so that the sleeve is touching the wood post, then clamp a scrap piece of deck board to the underside of the bottom rail. This will act as a spacer to elevate the rail section to the code compliant finished height. Temporarily position the rail so that the holes are approximately an equal distance to the post sleeve on each end of the rail. This distance needs to be a minimum of two inches to accommodate the top rail bracket. Using a single clamp, temporarily secure the bottom rail to the side of the bottom post sleeve. Next, place a baluster at each end of the bottom rail to make it easier to measure the distance from the baluster to the post sleeve. With a baluster at each end of the bottom rail, place the top rail on the balusters. Position the top rail so that the holes are at equal distance to the post sleeve on each end of the rail. Now, clamp the top rail to the outside of the post sleeves. With the space between the post sleeve and the baluster at the top rail set, now I adjust the bottom rail to match the top. Next, mark for my cuts at both ends of both rails with a pencil. I also mark the lower and upper post sleeves at the top of both rails. This way, we'll know at what height to place the rail when we return to attach it to the post sleeve. The next step is to cut both rails to length. Set the bottom rail to the lines marked previously on the bottom post and temporarily support the bottom rail with a clamp. Before we mark and drill for the foot block, add the stair adapter to the top of the foot block. Since the foot block extends to a maximum height of 4 inches, we set the bottom rail in place and find and mark the location for the foot block near the center of the bottom rail, but no greater than 4 inches from the tread to the bottom of the bottom rail. Drill a 3 16th inch hole at the foot block location, centered at the width of the bottom rail, which we'll use when we install the foot block later. Start the hole at a 90 degree angle, then pivot the drill to roughly match the angle of the stairs. Now that we've drilled the hole for our foot block, we're ready to install the rail brackets. The major difference between installing the rail brackets for the stairs versus the horizontal railing is the addition of these adapter brackets. The adapter bracket snaps into the standard bracket and is labeled top for the upper post connection and bottom for the lower post connection. Set the clutch of your drill to a low setting and go slow so that you don't snap the stainless steel screws. Make sure the bracket is flush or slightly shy of the end of the rail. For the top rail, using the one inch screws from the hardware kit, attach the assembled top stair bracket to the side with the baluster holes. On the bottom rail, attach the assembled bottom stair bracket to the side without baluster holes. Next, we'll use the mark we made earlier, which signifies the top of the top rail to determine where we'll cut our rail post sleeve. We want the distance between the bottom of our lower post cap to be the same as the upper post cap. That distance on this deck is two and a half inches. The post cap has a depth of one and a half inches. Therefore, we'll cut the post sleeve a total of four inches above our mark. With our length established, I can mark and cut our lower post sleeve. For this cut, the miter saw produces the cleanest cut. With our rails cut to length, brackets installed, and bottom post sleeve cut to length, it's time to connect our rails to the posts. Set the bottom rail in place so that it aligns with the mark made earlier on the bottom post. Place a clamp below the rail bracket on the lower post. Place a clamp and a scrap piece of 2x4 above the rail at the upper post. The rail should align with the mark made previously on the upper post. These keep the rail at the correct height while we're securing the rails to the post sleeves. Next, center the bottom rail on the post sleeve. Because the screws will be going in at an angle, I find pre-drilling with an eighth inch bit helpful. To prevent the drill chuck from marring the sides of the rails, I use a driver extension for pre-drilling as well as installing the provided three inch wood screws. Insert all the balusters into the bottom rail 
then lower the top rail down onto the balusters. I find that lifting and rotating the balusters up into the top rail helps speed the process. Once all the balusters are in, then I make sure the top rail is all the way seated and everything is snug. Just as we did with the bottom rail, place clamps under and above the rails. Next, center the top rail on the post sleeve. Again, using the driver extension, pre-drill for the provided 3-inch wood screws. Go slow when installing the wood screws and be careful not to over tighten. I position the foot block so that the nub was engaged with the hole I previously drilled in the rail. Next, I twisted the turn mount until it was fully tightened in between the deck surface and the rail. With the mounting hole facing outward, I installed one number 8 wood screw, which was provided, and pulled the sleeve down to cover the turn mount and screw. A little silicone adhesive on the tab inside the cap, some tape to hold them in place while the adhesive cures, and we're done. Thanks for joining us today, and remember to visit homedepot.com to find all the Trex materials you need to build your dream deck.